Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk with the Saw right here on Superlative Radio. Uh, so today we're going to talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier, episode three. And uh, this episode was uh, another step forward in the, the grinds of the gears, as it were. Yes, it was. And um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot that happened in it. And we get introduced to some new uh, scenes, uh, well, I guess locate, locales, I guess. And we get introduced to some uh, characters and a little bit of history and uh, lots of uh, lots of good stuff, I think. Yeah, it was I, I liked the episode. Quite action-packed. Yeah. So overall, what would you think of it? Um, overall, again, just I'm in. Uh, I'm just, you know, it's very it's very good, actually, the way that it turned out. Uh, it didn't, of course, you know, he mm. didn't uh, take over as mm. Captain America yet, as you said, but they're talking about it. You can yeah. see they're laying the foundation for it, so yeah. it's good. Well, uh, <clears throat> this this episode is called The Power Broker, and as I mentioned last week when we talked about this show, I said The Power Broker is uh, a guy who, in the comics, gave John Walker the super soldier serum. And that's how he ended up with it. And as we uh, as we learned, of course, uh, Carly, the uh, the young redheaded Irish girl in the show, uh, who's with the LAF, she had stolen twenty vials of the super soldier serum from the power broker, who is now we know the guy who sent the message. I'm you've taken what was mine. Right, I'm going to kill exactly. you. Right. So. Um, that said, uh, we we now, you know, we now have all that established. And we so also got to the, see the. Um, we also got to see the, the lab there where the guy yep. was making it. So the the episode, of course, it it starts with them as it ended last week with them going to see uh, Zemo, and of course uh, we we learned that uh, uh, Zemo has. Uh, um, been, you know, kind of rotten away in this prison or whatever, but not really. So Bucky goes to see him and he talks to him and uh, then he goes to, uh, he goes to Sam and, uh, you know, they talk about breaking him out and Sam's like, no, 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 we're not breaking him out. And Bucky's like, well, let me throw a hypothetical at you. And he goes through this whole thing and then you see Zemo break out, yeah. which is funny. And then he shows up and they, they... And he's, I like the part where Zemo's like, may I enter? No. And they both say <laughs> yeah. no at the same time. That was so funny. That was funny. Uh, so anyway, um, they agree to work with Zemo and uh, then they come to find out that Zemo's rich and he's like, well, I was a baron I was royalty yeah. and blah, 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 whatever. So they get on a private plane. Yeah. I like the part where he's like, uh, if the food doesn't pass the smell, yeah, taste, give it, give it to, to him. them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> And the so, guy said to her, it's nice to have you back. And it was so cool. Well, what was really good about, about this episode is we actually get to Z, uh, not Z. We actually get to Z. Yeah. No, we get to see Zemo um, because I don't know if you picked up on this, but in Civil War, when they introduced Zemo, they talk about how he was, um, he, he was Sokovian, he was a Sokovian Special Forces no, I don't remember secret. that. Like, so we get to see him, like when the, later on when he puts the mask on, he's fighting yeah, those guys, and he does a so little. Yeah, like yeah. he's he's a really good fighter. Yeah, and you get to see that later on in the episode because that's showing that he actually was the special forces person or yep, whatever. That's right. right. Yep. Which is really good. I I, I mean, we're finally. And he, of course, he had the the Baron Zemo comic book mask, which was great. So it was really cool to see him. And in then that. pulls up in his supercharged Corvette. That was. Uh, was it a vet? I think it was. Anyway, I think it was. You know, he says, "Get in, no, it supercharged." Was, it was a dodge. It was a dodge. Uh, okay, I thought it was. It was a dodge, a, but it was. It was one that. It was one he. He was. I think it was one he stole. I don't think it was his. Um, but anyway, uh, we do. We do get to see as I as I said they were going to go to Madripoor. Yep. And um, those of you from reading comics would know that Madripoor again is primarily somewhere that is is very established with the hand. And um, Wolverine and the X Men and stuff. Uh, so there's there's that aspect. So there's they're getting that tied. That, in. That's kind of like I, that's kind of a, like I said. I know they're going to bring mutants and stuff into it. So they're laying groundwork for mutants in the MCU in various ways. So by introducing us to Madripoor, we know that there's a history there with the mutants already. So 
um, there is all that. So they they info they they go to of course they go to Madripoor and uh, while they're in Madripoor they do uh, end up finding out uh, that this particular scientist had worked on the super soldier serum and of course they end up uh, before going to see him they meet up with Emily Van Camp's um, Sharon Carter agent 13 and we come to find out that because she had she had uh, taken Captain America's shield and Sam's wings in civil war she was branded an enemy of the state for whatever reason they didn't pardon her so she's been on the run and living in Madripoor and uh, so she helps them get to this scientist who's got the serum. And of course, then once they're in there, Zemo kills the scientists because he doesn't want him to make any more super soldier serum. And he had a pretty good point because he said, you know, at one point he says to them, he's like, do you guys want to live in a world where there's an army of people yeah. like the Red Skull? Which which made perfect sense. I mean, it does make perfect sense. And, it, and we kind of get hints at things like, we get we've gotten hints at about how the super soldier serum affects people throughout this series, right? So we learned that these 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 young people who are part of the LAF, how it's affected them. Um, we've learned that um, they you know they have issues with. Um, I guess violence or whatever, right? Yeah. Because they've gone really violent. I mean, they killed a bunch of people over supplies in this episode. But at the same time, we also see, um, we also see, of course, with Isaiah, how the super soldier serum affected him and how he was treated, which led to a whole, you know, of course, of course it 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 acted really weird with, with the Red Skull. The only one who seemed to be relatively unaffected by it mentally was Captain America. And so it does seem to affect everybody. I mean, we get to see a little bit about what I told you about with John Walker and how right. he was yep. different with Ca- than Captain America. Like mm-hmm. he gets a little violent, he grabs that guy and yep. punches That's him right. and whatever. Yeah. That's something Cap would never do, right? So we're seeing all of these little things that hint towards the bigger problem with the super soldier serum and with people having it and all this stuff. So, um, It'll be really interesting to see how they they get for. Of course, then you know while they're in this guy's lab, which is in a bunch of uh, container crates, like at a yeah, a tra- at a, at on a, a warehouse somewhere, somewhere yeah. a warehouse. Uh, you know, on a dock, maybe. It get, yeah, it gets it gets shot with a bazooka, and of course, then they have to escape. And uh, you know, they get away. Of course, they get back on Zemo's plane, and they head off. I'm surprised. Uh, to well, Europe. that's right. Emily Van Camp couldn't go with no, them. No, she doesn't she go with them. Yeah. Uh, so they go off to Europe, and uh, when they get to Europe, as they're going to go talk to somebody else, uh, Bucky is like, "I'll catch up with you guys. I'm just going to go for a walk." And of course, he finds all the little orbs from the the uh, yeah. bracelets from the Wakandans, who are there. Uh, you know, of course, yep. they're there after Zemo, and uh, he meets, of course, one of the women that we saw in Black Panther. So, um, it's really interesting now they're tying, you know, Black Panther into it. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, like the, the, the show was, the was show what, was, was it pull well put together. Uh, yeah, as you go? I, I, I'm, uh, but again, I'm, I'm really liking this show a lot. I enjoy it immensely. I enjoyed WandaVision immensely. And I like this. They're, they're, they're completely different stories. Oh, definitely. They're completely yeah. different uh, it's like watching, it is like watching two different movies, really. Yeah. I mean, set in the same continuity. It's, it's, it's very much like a comic book. Like it, it's very much like the comics, the way they're doing things in how, you know, some comics in the, you know, even in the Marvel universe, some comics have one tone, some comics have another tone. That's right. And they deal with completely different topics, but at some times you see all the heroes together. And I mean, I, I'm just... Yeah, I'm all. So as a yeah, as a okay. whole, I am right. good. I am really good with it, and of course, I uh, I gotta say that I'm I'm really a a fan of the way Sam and Bucky interact together. Well, like, there's a there's and a of chemistry course there was there. there was the whole thing where of course Bucky got into the front seat of the car. And Sam get into the back yeah. and he's like, you're not going to move your seat ahead, are you? And he goes, nope. no. Yeah. Just like from when they were in the, the the Volkswagen Beetle in Germany and Sam was in the front. Yeah, he's yeah. like, can you move your seat ahead? 
no. Yeah. It was, <laughs> was nice like, to have so that. That's so awesome. You just to get revenge on him with that. With that. It was <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's just really cool to see them interacting that way. And it's really good to see how they're, you know, they're just, they've got such a good there's a chemistry there chemistry yeah. there like it, they the two of them interact really good together and i just i look at it and i go oh man that's just so awesome the way they're doing it they, they've got a good i i think what's going to happen and of course they talk about taking the shield back from sam Wa or from john walker yeah, bucky was talking about that and, and bucky's like well if you're you know, <clears throat> sam was like well I'll get it back and i'll destroy it and he's like no you get it back i'm gonna take it yeah and you know and does bucky take it for a while you said in the comics, Bucky was Captain America for a little while, but okay. so Sam. So yeah. I think what's going to happen is we're going to see them take the shield and Sam's going to realize that he really should have just taken it. Because, I mean, if you look at the previews, there is the preview where you see Sam yeah, throwing it on his yeah. own property, right? Yeah. So I think we are going to get to the point where he has the shield and he takes it and he's going to practice with it and he's going to actually be, finally, he's going to be the next okay. Captain America. Oh. Or maybe Captain Falcon. You never know what they'll call him. Right, but still, he'll get there. Or they'll so. call him American Falcon. American Falcon. There or they you may go. call him Black Falcon. Black Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call you, Black Kid? Yeah, yeah. That was a funny part. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, but yeah, so I'm really, really looking forward to that. I hope, I hope Sam does take up the shield, and I think it would be cool. Or you know, if he doesn't, then at the very least, Bucky. You know, just so that it, it's, you know, that whole legacy because they, they both have that same legacy, and you like how. Of course, the, uh, Zemo got him to play Winter Soldier. Yeah, again, that's episode, right. Exactly. Right? Yeah, that's right. Just like boom. Yeah, like it was. That was really good. That whole scene in the well, in, they had to play their parts. Yeah, and, uh, that you whole, know, yeah. That whole scene in in the bar. Yeah, that was, was that just kick ass. And of course, then when he brought up that snake and he cut it yeah. open and fed it, yeah. I was just like, oh god. Yeah. It, even even Kim was like, oh, that's gross. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. I'm like. And he just takes it, he goes, yeah. he goes, it's still in his mouth. I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, he's good. It's just, he just swallow, yeah. no taste, just swallow That's it and right. be done with it. Don't even and he know, looks play at the him part. And goes, yeah, yeah, you got to play that part, right? So, uh, but yeah, and of course, I mean, he kicks all those guys' asses in there. And then Zemo's like, very well soldier. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it was so good. You know? It was well done. Yeah, they did a good job. And of course, you know, he, uh, Sam thought he looked like a pimp. Yeah. <laughs> at the beginning of it, you know, like it's, it's just the whole episode I think is, is, is good. There's people online, of course, they're saying that it's the weakest one yet. And I don't think so. I, I think the, I think the show really is building. And I think that a lot of people are not understanding that, yes, this is part of the MCU and it's not a movie. So they are playing it out like you would a TV show. And the reason they're doing it this way is because they're trying to lay foundation for things they want to do in the future. And if they want to do things in the future, then they have to have groundwork laid. Like I said, with Madripoor, right? Right. So you're laying a foundation there with Madripoor. You're introducing it. You're laying a foundation right. for it. And you're same getting ready for with, the mutants. Yeah. Same thing with the power broker. Like we may or may not find out by the end of the series who he is. Um, all of these things are going to build. And you have to look back at, at the fact that that's what they've done with all the movies. They've always thrown things in there to build, build on and build on and build on. And it's the same way they do in comics. Not every issue, when you read a comic book, like if you collect Captain America and you read Captain America comics, you can go back for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 100 years, whatever, and read Captain America comics, and you're going to be like, okay, well, they didn't, not every issue was action-packed. No. Some issues are filler, and they're filler because they need exposition. They need to explain things. They need True. to forward the, the overall story. And TV shows are no different. So to and like say, you well, said, this, to lay groundwork for yeah. things that are coming. It's, and, you know, and to say yeah. that this episode was weak, this episode is not weak. None of them have been weak. None of the WandaVision ones were weak. I said from the beginning, if you don't understand the first episode of WandaVision and what's happening, you're not paying enough attention because you're not paying attention to the story they're laying the foundations for. And that's the whole thing with these shows is that's what they're doing is they're laying foundations for things that are going to come. And at the same time, they're giving us action when they can. Yep. 
And this show, this episode had plenty of action. Okay. This episode had more more action, I think, than the last one did. It was because I think quite... the last episode only had the action of them fighting on top of the truck. Yeah, that's right. Right. This one had, had some at the bar, had, had some at the dock, had some at the, the dock. Yeah. Like there was much more action, I think. Yeah. There were two big fight scenes in this one as opposed to just one. So I don't know. Saying it's weak, I just I don't agree with that statement. And uh well, people are fussy that. though. And of course the other thing I want to talk about is the fact that John Walker, the guy who plays John Walker, Wyatt Russell, he's been getting death threats about playing Captain America. And I'm like, I'm reading this stuff online, and I'm like, you people that out there that are doing this, he's an actor. He's playing a character that you're not supposed to like because he's not Captain America. That's so he's doing point. his job he's, well. He's doing it well. You're not supposed to like him. Yeah. Or if you do like him, great. But you're not, he's, he's not, he, what they're trying to portray is that he's not Steve Rogers. Yep. John Walker is not Steve Rogers. And they're doing it well. They're showing you the differences between them. I think he's doing a great job playing John Walker. You read the comics, John Walker's an asshole. Yeah, well, so then they're not he's doing, doing, a, bad job. He's he's doing, doing a good job, job playing well, the part. Yep. Right? You're not supposed to like him the way everybody liked Steve because he's, he's an not. actor. He's, he's doing actor. what he's supposed to do and, and he's to doing say it somebody well. Somebody death threats for it is, is you're yeah. crazy. What is your problem? People take it too serious sometimes, you know? Like, hell, I take it serious, but at the same time, I don't send people death threats over. No, That's no. ridiculous. But There's you, no you make the it. difference. You know that it's, you know. It's a show. You're not supposed yeah. to like him. I mean, what I mean, do you send the do you send Josh Brolin death threats because he played Thanos and killed half the universe in the movies? Yeah, I know. I mean, come on, that just means he's playing the job well. That's right. You, you know, you you look at it; it's a character. They're, are they playing the character well? If you don't differentiate. know the backstory and you haven't read a comic book, then honestly, differentiate the real world end of thing. That's all. Enough, because. You can't say, I hate being Captain America because he's not Captain America. Well, no shit. But if you'd read a comic book, you would know that. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't take a genius to understand this point. So um, I think he's doing a fantastic job playing John Walker because he is the kind of, it's got, it's like, oh, I think, I like him. I think he's doing a great yep. job because I think he's playing John Walker well. And John Walker is not a likable character. He never was. Even when he becomes US agent later on, he's not a likable character. He's not a likable guy. He's a government controlled person. Yeah. He does what he's told. He's a pawn. He's a pawn. Yeah. That's what they wanted Captain America to be. In. Steve was like, no, I'm not going to be that. That's why Civil War happened. Yeah. Which is what I explained last That's week. Right. When we talked exactly. About. There's why there's that differentiating thing there. You know, so if people aren't getting it, then they're just not going to get it. And then that's, you know, you that's too bad, but say la vie. Yeah. And of course, you know, Emily Van Camp as uh, Sharon Carter, she kicks some serious butt on the dock. I mean, whew. she's another Canadian. Emily Van Camp? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. God bless those beautiful Canadian girls and they're kicking ass. <laughs> she did a great job, actually. She's, she's, she's great. Phenomenal. She's a good actress. I remember her in um, Revenge, another series she did. Yeah. She's, a, she's, she's really good. And she plays the character well. And I mean, man. She can kick some serious butt. Like, yeah, she's a good actress. I I, I liked her from the first time I, I saw her. I just find it funny that there are, that there are people that you and she's know, not hard to look at. I I just find it funny that there are people that try to take on some of these characters, and it's like, look, just because they're a woman, don't think you're gonna get the drop on them. They were in Shield. They kick yeah. ass. Yeah. Oh yeah. Careful. So, but yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, I think it's really good. So, anyway. Overall, I thought the episode was fantastic. Me too. Um, Enjoyed it thoroughly. I really liked it. Waiting looking, for the next one. Looking forward to how they're gonna how they're gonna do it because I mean, yep. whew. but again, like I said, I'm still sticking with my prediction. I think that uh, the reason that Sam's gonna end up with the shields, I think John Walker's gonna end up dead. I think okay. that's what's gonna happen. Um, I guess we'll we'll have to wait and see. But oh yeah, but that's what you think's gonna happen. So I we'll well let's happen. see if you're right. Uh, because otherwise, I can't see how he's gonna give it up. Well, unless they just beat him and take it. I mean, I don't know. I have no idea, but it'll be interesting to see. So. Well, I guess we'll see. What do you think? Do you have any predictions? I have no predictions what you at all. going to happen? No, none. No predictions. No, on this you, end. Can't, no. you can't. You can't I'm not in that. Anything? No, I can't really predict anything. At least at this point, I can't. Okay. I'm just well, there soaking was no it up. after the credit scene. Uh, There's none. There is none. No, nope. I, I would. I would imagine that the next one 
will have one. I'm pretty sure they'll have one in the next one. All right. Episodes four, five, and six, I'll bet you anything, are going to have any end of credit scenes. Okay. I think we'll see what we'll see is with the next one, there will be... There will be after the regular like Falcon in the Winter Soldier credits ones that have all the yep. graphics. When that goes, there will be end credit. I don't think there will be another one. I think it'll just be one. And then the next episode after will have two. And then the one after that, the final one will have two more. I think. I think okay. Let's see how accurate I'm you are. Yeah, that's what they're gonna do. All right. We'll see. Yep, we will. Anyway. Uh what do you guys think out there? You know, what did you think of the episode? Are you guys, you know, just as is involved in this are you again do you agree with my statement about riot russell wyatt russell playing uh john walker is he is he doing a good job do you think the death threat thing is just ridiculous you know um who's your favorite character on the show so far you know what like yeah let's hear it Let- write it below and uh you know don't forget to check out our other channels and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and um yeah yeah we will see you guys for another episode of Come on back to Pennyworth. Superlative uh, radio dot com and see. Yep. So, um, because Pennyworth is coming to an end too. So, yeah. So only got a couple of those left. Only yeah. got a couple of those off. So we will catch you guys for the next episode. Let's talk with Saul right here on Superlative Radio. Meantime, stay healthy. <laughs>